today we will be talking about water pollution this lecture is presented by ASS Science Foundation Delhi and today's topic of discussion is water pollution as you can see in our literature that we have categorized the type of pollutants in water into six category the first one is oxygen consuming waste the second is synthetic organics for example pesticides third is disease causing agents such as fungus bacteria algae etc fourth is inorganic substances like fertilizers heavy metals fifth one is radioactive substances and sixth one or the last one is thermal pollution so we will be studying the types of water pollutant in the mentioned categories the first category which we are starting to discuss is oxygen consuming waste the first term which comes to our mind when we talk about oxygen consuming waste is dissolved oxygen which is denoted by do so generally the normal value or the normal range of do in water varies from 8 to 15 mg per liter or ppm because mg per liter refers to as ppm or parts per million so the normal value of do ranges from 8 to 15 milligram per liter or ppm if this value goes below 8 mg per liter then the water is called as contaminated and if this value goes below 4 mg per liter then the water is called as polluted water so these informations are important as far as the do is concerned now we have shown a picture in which on the y-axis we have shown the do content on the x-axis we have shown the increase in temperature or the temperature and if we plot a graph between do and temperature as shown in this diagram we can see that when the do content is 50 mg per liter then the temperature is very less as we start increasing the temperature then the do start decreasing so we can also say that as we talk about the dissolved oxygen in water so the solubility of oxygen decrease with increase in temperature when we talk about solubility of oxygen in water as in the case of do so here we can see as the temperature increase the do decrease so do is inversely proportional to temperature now there are certain oxygen controlling process one category is the oxygen producing process another category is the oxygen consuming process in oxygen producing process we have photosynthesis which all of you know that is the fixation of sunlight by plants or phytoplanktons or autotrophs then reaeration it is nothing but mixing of atmospheric air into the water then we have two oxygen consuming process also respiration and degradation of oxygen consuming waste and we have also given about the diffusion in the gases so gases diffuse from higher pressure to lower pressure as a thumb rule across the gradient diffusion is nothing it's a movement of molecule from higher pressure to low pressure as all of you know if we talk about reaeration the process in which the oxygen enter into the water through the contact of water surface from atmosphere is referred to as reaeration like you can see in the diagram one stream is shown there in which we have shown atmospheric pressure as p naught and the pressure of the stream or the water body as p1 sorry assume a case one if the atmospheric pressure is more than the stream pressure 
then it will be P0 will be more than P1 which is shown on the left hand side then as we mentioned that gas is diffused from high pressure to low pressure so oxygen will start diffusing from atmosphere to the stream and this is referred to as influx and it happens when the stream is unsaturated in terms of dissolved oxygen on the right hand side we have shown another case where the stream pressure p1 is more than the atmospheric pressure p0 in this case as the rule of diffusion the oxygen will start moving from stream to atmosphere this process is referred to as outflux and this happens when the water body is super saturated with oxygen when the actual amount of oxygen in water is less than the saturation value at a given temperature atmospheric oxygen passes into the water at a rate which is directly proportional to the difference between the pressure of atmosphere and stream or deficit if we talk about the saturation where the atmospheric pressure is equal to the stream pressure means p1 is equal to p0 then oxygen will not move anyway neither from atmosphere to stream nor from stream to atmosphere rate of reaeration would always be higher in a bubbling stream due to increase in the surface area as all of us know more the surface area more is the rate of reaction in comparison to a stagnant pond or water body now in the next diagram we have shown the diurnal variation of dissolved oxygen on the y axis we have shown the do on the x axis we have shown the hour of the day or the timing so first we have shown the timing from 0 to 12 pm then 6 am then 12 noon 6 pm and 12 pm and we have shown horizontal line which is shown as saturation level and you can see here from 12 night till 6 am we have no light so there is no photosynthesis only respiration is there in the water body so do content will decrease as shown in the diagram at 6 am time as the sunlight start appearing the photosynthesis will start and do content of the water body will start increasing and it will attain its maximum value till 12 noon so the do in a water body is maximum at 12 noon or afternoon then again it will get saturated and again as the sunlight decrease the amount of photosynthesis will decrease and hence the dissolved oxygen in the stream so do would be maximum in a stream in afternoon or near 12 noon minimum do level is observed around 6 am or in the morning when there is very less or negligible photosynthesis in afternoon the water is super saturated with oxygen and oxygen diffuses out instead of going into in the water body now we will be talking something about the effects of dissolved oxygen and indicator species of water pollution in a water reduced do content if we have a reduced do content in a water body some of the sensitive organisms like fish phytoplanktons molluscs would be eliminated because they are more sensitive towards the pollution however a few tolerant species like annelida worm rotifers tubifix insect larva or red insect they may survive and are recognized as indicator species for polluted water means they are water pollution indicator or they are the biological indicator of water pollution so we can say that water pollution in a water body could be recognized by observing these species and lid worms rotifers tubifix insect more as the population of these species more is the water pollution 
then there is very important questions from all the competitive exam point of view what is the indicator of fecal contamination means whether the water is contaminated with human excreta or not then fecal contamination is confirmed with the help of e coli or e coli is the indicator of fecal contamination into the water body now we have shown a figure in which we have tried to relate the do and bod so now we will be studying the relationship between do and bod which is very important from examination point of view so bod how we define bod first we will expand this term bod stands for biological oxygen demand or some of the literature and scientists say it as biochemical oxygen demand biochemical oxygen demand is a more appropriate term nowadays how we define bod it is the amount of oxygen required by aerobic bacteria or organism to decompose or biodegrade to decompose or biodegradable waste aerobically to co2 and h2o or we can say that it is the amount of oxygen required by aerobic bacteria or organism to decompose the biodegradable waste which is finally converted into co2 and water aerobically means in the presence of oxygen the other term here is cod which is referred to as chemical oxygen demand how we define cod cod it is the amount or the measure of oxygen cod is referred to as the amount or the measure of oxygen required by chemical added for complete oxidation of total organic matter means the biodegradable matter as well as the non biodegradable matter present in the water so it is the measure of oxygen required by chemical added for complete oxidation of total organic matter biodegradable as well as non biodegradable so if you observe the given diagram in our literature you can see on the x axis we have shown the downstream flow of the water body on the y axis we have shown the amount of do so you can say if we take a sample of the water at a point source let us suppose an industry or a sewage source a drainage which is exiting from a house which is a point source of pollution you will observe that this water will be having a very high bod and a very low do as the water moves towards downstream you will observe with time due to reaeration and dilution effect the bod of that water will start decreasing and do of the water will start increasing as we proceed downstream so now we can have few of the observation about this concept that higher the bod lower would be the do means bod is inversely proportional to do as we move away downstream from the source of sewage two things happen first the bod would decrease second the do would increase due to dilution as well as reaeration but dilution is the main reason to decrease the pollution load now we could have some generalized observations also like pollution is directly proportional to the bod means more the pollution more the bod lesser the pollution lesser the bod on the other hand bod is inversely proportional to do more the do lesser will be the bod lesser the do more will be the bod
Now we will be talking something about BOD means biochemical oxygen demand 